The um, title of my lecture is having to do with the two subjects. One of them, sadly, um, is a good example of the, of the worry expressed by Raul, late La Raul Hilberg in his last lecture at Yad Vashem in 2006, basically saying that uh, Holocaust research and Holocaust science and the science of the, about the Holocaust went to, to the complete change from the research that was burdened with, uh, with the fighting in the Second World War to the research of suffering, almost losing the, the frame of the Second World War. It's easily to, to show it. Today, what day is it? What day is today? 9th of May, Victory Day. Mm -hmm. And we are having conference about Holocaust and nobody mentioned it today. We won that war. And uh, it has a lot to do with, with, this, uh, the, with this topic. So we are now researching suffering for decades already. And, uh, but uh, you know we are alive. And we are alive due to the fact that we fought. And uh, that's something that, that makes Yugoslavia a quite important place. We told you respect, resistance in Europe, except East, except uh, Russia, Western Russia or Western Soviet Union was, okay, people were trying to do what it was possible. But in Yugoslavia, already in the end of the 41, there were formed brigades. In the late 42, we had divisions. In the 43, we had corps. In the four, late 44, beginning of 94, we had armies. Okay, if we, we can downgrade that maybe brigade was enhanced a reinforced battalion, that uh, division was a reinforced brigade, that corps was a reinforced division. But we don't have an idea that Germans might send a second panzer army to France to fight uh, resistance. There was no need for such a thing. But in the 43, the Second Panzer Army under Lothar Rendulich, including a division of Cossacks, uh, uh, First SS Cavalry Division, was sent, was sent to Yugoslavia in order to fight Yugoslav partisans. They were guarding mainly the railroad between Belgrade and, uh, and Zagreb and the way to, of a retreat of a German troops later, later from Greece. So uh, basically, <coughs> the, there is something that we can say at the beginning and uh, that is a very important for Yugoslav case. That the, case, that the story of uh, medicine within the resistance, Yugoslav resistance, is a, a very much story of the Holocaust. Or the story of Holocaust in its greater, great part is a story of the medicine in the resistance. Well, and I want to make, um, let's say, uh, point to continue from the, from the lecture of my colleague Bojan Djokic. He yesterday spoke about suffering of the Jewish physicians and the health professionals in Yugoslavia during the Second World War. Uh, and I want to begin from the same point uh, where he ends his story, which means, uh, of course, most and uh, notorious place in Yugoslavia during the war. It's a Yasenovac concentration camp. Immediately after the war, the first estimation were that in the Yasenovac some 700,000 people were killed. That's why it made it one of the biggest camps in the Second World War, though it's not, not true. Uh, the latest uh, estimations are still wild, going between, let's say, 100-something thousand till 250,000. But uh, what we have, we have some 90,000 names. This way or another, it makes it a great camp, especially if we know that uh, Yehuda Bauer used to, to write in his Rethinking the Holocaust that Yasenovac, as nothing else, was more horrible than its Nazi counterparts. What makes it more horrible makes it fact that all the killings in Yasenovac were done by hand. Knife, hammer, and uh, just a few lucky people were shot. So uh, that, that there is a school that says it's impossible to kill such, such a number of people. 
with the, with the hand, but Rwanda tells us opposite, which means that in 100 days, 800,000 people were killed, also used very, uh, just, the, just the tools, main, mainly. So, so what happened recently is that uh, the one meet about yes, one more meet about Yasenovats was uh, deconstructed. Basically, meet says that after the Second World War, communists destroyed the camp and there was nothing left there. So basically, when in 1966 the memorial ground was established, the memorial institution was established there, there was nothing original. So they had to invent everything in building a memorial site. Uh, just a f uh, few months ago, we found a hospital of Yasenovats a bit out of the place where the main body of camp was. And that was a hospital for Ustashi, just to, to remind those who are not professionals in uh, Holocaust historiography. Ustashi uh, were the Croatian version of Nazis when Yugoslavia was dissolved. Germans and Italians jointly established the so-called independent state of Croatia at the territory of today's Bosnia and Croatia. It was led by, by Ustashi movement, which is a Nazi, Nazi movement, which differs from fascist and Nazis with one important thing, with a strong presence of the uh, Roman Catholic ideology, and uh, Ustashi basically saw themselves as the crusaders. So their war was against Serbs, against Jews, against Roma, and everybody else who were not interested in having a uh, Nazi, very strange combined Nazi, Nazi Catholic state. So they, uh, mm, they had a separate hospital for them. Ustashi, who were guarding the camp and running the camp, and there were two battalions, about two battalions of them, were having, of course, separate hospital because, of course, they will, will, will not mingle with the, with the prisoners. So uh, out of that hospital, we found a pharmacy and the place where doctors and uh, medical uh, physicians and uh, health professionals were lodging. I mean, prison for them. And uh, it was all pri property of one Serbian family that uh, immediately after the war returned to the property and they simply uh, continued to use those spaces. So they were not allowed to destroy it. They were not allowed to be destroyed. And uh, I, when we entered the pharmacy, there was already a great surprise on the one wall there was a, such a large Magen David, Star of, Star of David in yellow color, which basically meant that Ustashi signed it, as I said, you know, this is a Jew place where Jews should, should be. So uh, out of, uh, let's say, 48 uh, doctors that, that, used to, that used to be in the, in the camp, that, in, the, in the, the hospital and were treating Ustashi, some 30, uh, 35 to 38 of them were Jews. Last were Serbs or Croatian anti-fascists. Few of them survived, but we have a lot of memoirs after the war about uh, doctors who were there and everything. And I have to announce here that we will soon, we bought it, and uh, very soon we will turn it into the museum. And that will be the only, the only original part of the camp that will be that will, uh, that will serve as well as a museum and serve as a, as, a, as, a, uh, as a remembrance of the Jewish and other doctors who served, who served there. So uh, I found it appropriate to talk here about it. And what is, impo what is important with that hospital, Yasenovac, uh, uh, one of the plans for the liberation of Yasenovac, and Yasenovac was never liberated, the, the last uh, inmates uproar had a prizing on the April 22nd, which makes Holocaust Day in Serbia and uh, some other parts of former Yugoslavia. They rebelled, there was some 100 of them managed to flee, some 900 of them were killed in the, in the uprising and the partisan center at camp on the May 2nd, 3rd, 1945, it's two weeks after uprising. So, but what, why it is important that one of the plans for the liberation of the camp came from this hospital which means that the hospital was the bulk, the stronghold of the resistance within the camp. And they even managed to, to smuggle the plan for the liberation of the camp to the partisans in the vicinity, because just a few kilometers from the part, from Yasenovac was a partisan, the partisan stronghold of Tito's partisans on the Mount of Kozara. And the elite units of partisans were there, and they never tried from the September 41 to May 40, uh, 45 to liberate the camp. And uh, uh, also, 
some of doctors per, you know, found that they were part of the resistance. Some were hanged in the 44, and one of them was shot, Dr. Milo Boshkovich, a Montenegrin. And because of that, uh, he was shot personally by Dinko Shakic, commander of Yasenovac's camp. And because of that shooting, and, uh, and that murder, Dinko Shakic was found in Argentina, uh, extradited to Croatia in 98, 99, and sentenced to 20 years of uh, uh, prison, 20 years prison. But it's not a problem. The Al, uh, uh, Captain Aldorfer from SS, who ran the killing of uh, Belgrade Jews by gas fans, got five years for a murder of a six to 7,000 people, which means that uh, for uh, each Jewish person that he murdered personally, uh, he got eight hours of, of jail. That was, uh, some, it was somewhere in the 50s when Germany was needed as a you know, wall against, against the Soviet, Soviet camp. So he died in a prison and uh, uh, he was buried in Ustasha uniform with uh, all uh, honors of Ustasha officers, officer in just 10 years ago. So now we are going back to the Yasenovac resistance. Uh, why it is in, I important? It's important is because the Jews in Yugoslavia had two ways to survive. One, uh, ma two main ways to survive. One was to flee to uh, Italian occupation zone, and it's a well-known the story how I Italians almost army and the Ministry of Foreign Affairs almost uh, made the plot to save Jewish lives. A lot of was written about it. But, and the second uh, possibility was to go to the, uh, to the uh, resistance units. In Yugoslavia, we had two resistance movements, one a realistic one, which existed in Serbia, mainly, and the two was a partisan. It was a communist-led, but not really communist until the late 44, uh, but communist-led, which uh, happened to, to be in the uh, occupied Bos Bosnia and Herzegovina, which means independent state of Croatia. And uh, it was mainly Serbian one until the capitulation of Italy. Uh, there is a one very simple way how to prove it, that uh, uh, the pensions for the Tito's fighters were much different if you joined the partisans before the capitulation of Italy and after capitulation of Italy. So I have to say my aunt, and she was Ukrainian, somehow settled by Austro-Hungary there, and uh, she was a partisan. She joined the 7th Kraina Brigade in the, well, let's say, half of the 1943, and uh, her pension was enormous. <laughs> but uh, the, the sp same people from the same brigade who joined it in November that year, their pensions were correct, nice, but not, nothing to, to write home about. Yeah, but that's a very important. It shows that partisans have very clear p view of w who was really in the movement and who joined it when it was clear that you know war is uh, war is decided more more or less. So uh, at one point, uh, some of the Jews understood it, some of them didn't. Holocaust was swift. Everything was done in Serbia in May, May 45, 42. Those who managed to flee before they were saved. Those, those who didn't, some of them managed to hide in the Serbian uh, countryside. But, uh, but the main body had to flee to partisans or to, uh, or to join the royalist movement. A number of them were there as well. But, uh, but mainly they, they managed to flee to, uh, to, to partisans. And who were they who, who flee to partisans? The physicians and the, and the health professionals. So I'd, I will read here as introduction to that part. Uh, the names of the, of the doctors, exactly, medical staff, ba ba basically, in the central hospital of the partisan movement, at the beginning of 1943, where the most horrible fights took part, beginning of 1943 to the September 1943, the three German, German actions against the partisans, Weiss one, Weiss two, and the Schwartz. So, in the central hospital of the partisan movement, all our doctors, uh, Bielic Jovo, Benic Ivan, Bozovic Sasha, Bulajic Joshan, Bushatlic Alia, a Muslim, Jukanovic Vojo, Finkelstein Bruno, Fischer Zlatko, Ginsberger Oscar, Goldschmidt Zora, Gostl Hinko, Gutmann Frieda, Herlinger Karl, Hirschel Mladen, 
Kralj Ivo Kraus, Julija Kraus, Gustav Kuket, Stanko Levi, Isidor Mijušković, Radoje Morović, Marija Nojman, Ljuba, Petrak Zvonimir, Popović, Dejan, Pstrocki, Marija Radonjić, Teodor Rajić, Artur Štajner, Stjepan, Turić, Zlatan, Vinter, Pavao, Žunković, Orest. Which means makes 14 of 31 were clearly Jews. In the units of the main operative group, which makes 1st Proletarian Division, 3rd Proletarian Division, and several other units, 7 of 22 were Jewish. Out of, this, uh, out of the, uh, the, the, the medical, medical com command of the medical corps of the partisans, four out of, uh, 2 out of 4 were, were Jewish. The only the thing where Jew Jews are stopping to be present is the personal entourage of Marshal Tito. Marshal Tito. Mm -hmm. No Jews. No Jews? No Jews. Let's say a few things about the... <laughs> well, uh, he was running the real, the real, real resistance, resistance movement. He's the most powerful resistance hero in Europe. Besides Soviet Union. And the Belarus and the, the, the partisans, no, no. I, I am speaking about the Belarus partisans and the Armia Krajova, uh, generally the Western occupied parts of Soviet Union. Yeah. There, there was a strong partisan movement, and on that matter, we uh, we can compare. There was nothing else in in Europe uh, of that size. Uh, hundreds of square uh, kilometers of the liberated territory. You remember that on May 25th, the Germans even throw a parachute. Uh, a parachute battalion, uh, the only parachute battalion of the SS that they managed to, to gather to capture Tito in Drvar, and they didn't manage. And by, that, mm, by the way, the, that mm, battalion tomorrow morning was erased from the list of SS units. They didn't exist anymore, and we are very proud of it. Um, uh, personally speaking, I lost 337 people by name that we know in the Second World. My family. Thirty-seven. So, and only ten of them were killed in Yasenovac. So maybe they were killed in the villages. They were killed in the resistance fighting. So, now we have a uh, such a number of about four thousand Jews participated in the liberation in the liberation movement. Out of them. 1,200 were killed. Out of 1,200 uh, 1, killed, uh, two, uh, 200 of them were uh, physicians and, uh, and uh, uh, health professionals. Uh, which means uh, that the rate of the participation of the Jewish uh, physicians and the medical workers was a key thing in the partisan movement. And now we, we will show it by the uh, statement of the head of the, mar of the partisan medical corps, uh, General Gojko Nikolic, who was, uh, was particularly attacked that he promoted the Jews uh, in the medical corps. And what does, what does he say, basically? Uh, concerning that, that, I was accused that, uh, that I, I preferred Dr. Isidor Papo, uh, and generally that I'm too soft with the Jews, with the Jewish doctors, physicians. And concerning Jews, I'm uh, absolutely sure that I didn't make any mistake. Simply, they were in a large numbers in our, in our movement, and with a very rare uh, examples, they were very capable people, good organizers, and anti-Yavashli, which is I cannot, something that I cannot translate. They were anti doesn't matter. They, they simply cared for what, what they do. And they were very harsh with those who didn't. And uh, with, a, with a clean science uh, uh, conscience, I put them on the, on the responsible, uh, I gave them responsibilities. Hopefully, I would like that such a people we had more. Uh, concerning Isidor Papo, I said that, uh, that uh, um, I, 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 there was no sentiments on the, on the racial ground. I pushed him, but he was simply capable, and there was a reason for him to be pushed 
to be pushed far and high, high, and he was the most famous uh, physician in Yugoslavia after the Second World War. One of the five Jews that uh, that gained a, a rank of general in the Yugoslav People's Army, and uh, one of the Jews, for example, who was lieutenant colonel, got a son who was uh, much more, who gained much more rank. His his. Uh, he was a lieutenant colonel Elazar, and his son was Dado Elazar, uh, who was at the time serving in the other army in uh, Zahal. What did his father do? His father was a lieutenant colonel in the Yugoslav People's Army after the war. And they met uh, in Israel in the 60s, and the son told him, finally, I, I can tell you what to do. <laughs> OK. Uh, so this is the one thing. So now what, what happens? It happens that this, this profound experience, not only of the Holocaust, but of the mass murder that was going on in Yugoslavia, uh, I have to remind you that 150 dead suffered partisans in Yugoslavia, 150,000 dead, not mentioning other casualties, not mentioning civilian casualties. So the, the lowest estimated number of dead Serbs is a 400,000 in the independent state of Croatia, in the pure act of genocide. And uh, even uh, Rafael Lemkin in his book from 1944, The Axis Rule in the Occupied Europe, he mentioned uh, especially the treatment of Serbs in the independent state of Croatia as a clear example of the genocide. So, so what's going on then? As we know, the people change. That's something that the Boyan yesterday wrote about a very often case of suicide of Jews in Yugoslavia when they were, especially physicians, where they were approached, especially by Ustashi, in order to take them to the camps. So what's going on after the war? Uh, especially due to the uh, ongoing ideologization of the, of the communist Yugoslavia. It's a, we had a ver several, well, let's say, spiritual answers uh, on the experience of the Second, Second World War. A, it's atheization. Very strong atheization. People are saying, okay, there is no God who allows such a things and, and, and everything. That's well known. Another one is also well known. It's a conversion. For example, we had a Dr. Maxim Stern, who was, a, uh, who was a one of the partisan doctors. After the war, he converted to the Orthodox Church. But also we have a, such a case as, uh, as a kind of uh, resistance also among the Croatians, a famous Croatian uh, scientist, uh, mm, the one who wrote, uh, who wrote uh, Magnum Crimen, Viktor Novak. Viktor Novak, he converted to the Orthodox Church as a, as a sign of his anger against the Catholic, Catholic Church, and he wrote the main source about the role of the Catholic Church in the Second World War in Yugoslavia, which is a horrible. More than 1,000 priests participated in Ustashi movement and in the, in the mass murder, including several of them who were commanders of Yasenovac. So, uh, third thing is writing. Half of the Jews from who survived the Second World War in Yugoslavia came in 94, uh, 1948 to Israel. Half of them stayed. Those who stayed felt more communist than Jews, for more, more Yugoslav than, uh, than, than Jewish. And there is a famous story that I sometimes tell about Moshe Piad, a, uh, a Jew from Belgrade who was a Tito's aide. Uh, yeah, he was a very, in the, in, the, in, the, in the, let's say, among the 10 most influential people. And when, he, when the Israelis came in 1948 to, to ask for a more support from Yugoslavia, and Yugoslavia was supporting Israel, especially concerning the flow of the Czech arms to, to, to Israel in, uh, over, over Yugoslavia, uh, they came to, to ask more, and uh, Tito appointed Moshe Piade to speak to Israelis, and he was listening to them, listening to them, and after all, he said, listen, as a Serb, I, I understand you Israelis uh, completely. Uh, so which means that his identification was, uh, was, uh, was uh, of the other, other kind. And uh, uh, that makes all those responses after the war. And one of the responses was to write. And who was writing? Those who, who survived the war as a medical, medical workers, as a, as a physicians and the medical staff. Look at this now. 
This is the list of the published, published autobiographies or memoirs or whatever, and I will finish soon, uh, memoirs in the, in the year of 1980. You see this list is a 38 uh, memoirs of the, Jew, of the Jews who participated as a, as a medical, as a physicians and the medical workers. Only one is not written about medical issues or by, not by, by a, a medical staff. 37 were written by, by it. So even a final, final uh, synthesis about, the, about the, the Shoah in Yugoslavia was written and published in 1980 by Dr. Yasha Roman, who was a physicist, in fact. So the, the, the fact is that Yugoslav Jews didn't produce a historian after the Second World War, except Menachem Shelach, but he was in Israeli. But Jews from Yugoslavia were, didn't produce a historian. And uh, that's one of the reasons why we still have a, a problem with the history, historiography, history of, uh, uh, of uh, Shoah in Yugoslavia. We do not have a new synthesis which will be, comp uh, which be, be uh, to, to fill Menachem Shelach's, Shelach's one, which is already old, yeah. old one. Yeah. So basically, that was, okay. that was it. And uh, I think if there are some questions, I will be more than happy okay. to, to speak about you. it. Thank you.